Hi there, my name is Nigel, welcome to Valve Camp. In this series of videos, I'd like to introduce you to the range of products produced at our Pentair Hamilton manufacturing facility. The first one I'd like to show you is the F250 butterfly valve, this baby here. In this case, we've got it mounted underneath a F257 quarter turn actuator, this is the four inch version, and a F783E control head, E for easy mind. Uh, this is a compact assembly, uh, the uh, act control top and uh, actuator internally ported so there's no tubing on the outside, just air supply in and that's all. Uh, we have a, a small compact lightweight uh, easy to assemble uh, mounting assembly here uh, directly onto the, onto the valve bodies. Just a note about figure numbers, the figure numbers are inherited from our previous parent company which was Keystone, an American firm. Now the F250 butterfly isn't the only butterfly, we, a butterfly valve we make, we also make an F251 and the difference between the two is F250 is designed for uh, imperial standard tubing, these are inch tubing, so one inch, one and a half, up to six inch tubing. The F251 series is designed for metric tubing, so it goes from 25 millimeter, 40, 80, 100, 125 and 150 millimeter. It's an essential that you get that part right when you're supplying a valve. The F250 comes with a variety of end connections. This one is butt weld, most popular type. Uh, we also have, uh, similar to this, thread end. Uh, there are also triclover clamp ends and my favorite, the wafer style. It comes in everything from one inch to this is a five inch. The big advantage of wafer is when removing a valve from uh, service, you're going to find you have to pull these two flanges or the pipe work is apart, the width of the disc and seat assembly, which in the small one like this is about 17 millimeters, larger one 20 millimeters, that one 22 millimeters. That's a long way for stainless steel to stretch. The advantage of the wafer is that we only have to part those flanges one millimeter. Uh, a lot of most pipe work assemblies can stand that without any other adjustment or modification anywhere else. So we'll get to it. First thing we do is take the handle off. Now I'll just make a note here, first of all, the orientation of the valve disc. On the underside of the valve, the end of the valve disc, there are two uh, alignment grooves which tell me which direction the paddle is facing. So I can feel these with my fingers, I know the disc is across the valve, I know the valve is in the shut position. Take a screwdriver or similar implement without damaging yourself, remove the bung. There's an allen head screw which retains the handle onto the disc. Remove that completely, release the trigger and the handle will come off and the notch plate. There we have the bare valve. To remove the valve, we use take advantage of these jacking nuts here, which we can spread apart and use those to wind the two flange components apart. Now they don't have to move far, a couple of turns on each one is enough. got a cassette here which is a self-contained valve, two seals that work on the flanges, the main disc seal and that can be taken away for service or if it's a critical uh, function you can have a hot spare sitting here ready to drop straight back in, close up, put the handle back on and you're back in service. The big advantage of this is because of the jacking bolts stay in place, the, the pipe work doesn't spring and head off in different directions. So realigning the valve back into place when it's been serviced is simply a matter of dropping it back in the cradle and sitting it on those cradle bolts. Now you slacken the jacking nuts, tighten the clamping nuts back up and you're back in service. In the case we have an actuator on top of the valve, I'd like to show you how to take that actuator off. simple matter, there are only two bolts holding it on there and 
you don't have to catch anything as you undo these bolts except these plates and the bolts themselves. Simply remove them. And the actuator will sit on top of the valve. These plates pop out of the way, actuator stays put. And we can remove the actuator and the drive dock. Removal of the disc involves just removing the fixing screws. Here we have the disc seat and the two bearings in place. Remove the bearings, discard, there'll be new bearings in the kit. You've got a short end and a long end. We leave it on the long end, remove the seat off the short end simply by pulling it over the edge. You may find it easier to use a vise to hold the long end when you're doing that, but you don't have to. We get our kit. In this case, I'm changing out a v, uh, VKM for an EPDM. And the kit comes with lubricant, bearings, little label, and instructions on what to do next. First thing we do is lubricate the seal. There's adequate lube in here for doing that. Tear the end off. Squeeze some lube out into the stem holes here. Give it a bit of a wipe around with the finger, a little bit extra onto the hub area. Same the other end. There's plenty of lube in one of these packs to do this job. Don't try and save a half packet in your toolbox. It'll just get grit in it and then become useless. So just discard that, you don't need any more. With the disc, we insert the long end of the disc first into the seat. Leave it sitting sideways like that and just simply stretch the seat over. Fit a bearing in each of the bearing grooves. Just uh, remember that the two inch and below only have one bearing groove at the bottom and so discard the spare at the top. Refit into the valve body, long end where the mounting screw mounting holes are. Again, long end where the mounting holes are, and then bolt together. You're back in service. Strongly recommend if the screws are dry. You put a small amount of grease or anti-seize, whatever you prefer, on the screws before putting the nuts in. Otherwise you risk galling the threads. Each instruction will come with a torque setting for the time size screw that's involved. This is a three inch valve. Uh, it has eight millimeter screws in it. So it has 20 newton meters of torque. I strongly recommend you use a torque wrench for setting these screws in place. Reassembly is the reverse. Check the disc is in the closed position. Yes. Place the drive boss in. Sit the actuator on top. Just noting the orientation of the indicators. Make sure they're the direction you require them. These plates here. If you align the bottom pin holes in the valve body and then just lift that gently, it'll sit in place. 
refit the screws. Tighten. and you're ready to test.